Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we are going to solve a problem on turning moment diagram and flywheel. In this video, we are going to understand how to draw turning moment diagram for the 4 stroke engine by understanding its working. We are also going to use the simple basic formulas instead of using complicated formulas. Now first I will read what is the given problem. A single cylinder single acting 4 stroke gas engine develops 20 kW at 300 rpm. The work done by the gases during the expansion stroke is 3 times the work done on the gases during compression stroke. The work done during suction and exhaust stroke being negligible. If the total fluctuation speed is not to exceed plus minus 2% of the mean speed and the turning moment diagram during compression and expansion is assumed to be triangular in shape, find the moment of inertia of the flywheel. So this was the given question. Let us first understand how to draw turning moment diagram from the working of 4 stroke engine. So in 4 stroke engine there are total 4 strokes. So first stroke is the suction stroke. So we will understand that. So here this is the inlet valve and exhaust valve. When the piston moves from TDC to BDC at the same time crank moves from this point A towards point B. That means half revolution of this total one circle is getting completed and which is equal to 180 degrees. So in radians we can say pi. So we have to show that. So we know that in turning moment diagram on this vertical line we have to show turning moment or torque. And on this horizontal line we have to show the crank angle. So during suction stroke half revolution is getting completed. Angle covered is equal to pi. So here from 0 to pi we have to show the suction stroke. Now the next stroke is the compression stroke. So in the compression stroke what is happening here? Piston moves from BDC to TDC. And in this stroke both the valves remain closed and air fuel mixture is getting compressed. And at the same time here the crank will move from this point B towards point A. So remaining half revolution is getting completed. So what is the total movement of the crank? That is it completes one rotation and that is equal to 360 degree. So from this initial point 0 we have to show that is the crank angle which is equal to 2 pi. And here we have to show the compression. Then the next stroke is the expansion stroke. So in this expansion the power is getting produced. So here air fuel mixture burns and that's why power is getting generated and here piston moves from TDC to BDC and again the crank will move from point A towards point B. That means total one revolution plus half revolution is getting completed. So we have to show crank angle 3 pi and here the expansion stroke is getting completed. Now next stroke is exhaust stroke. So here uh, this outlet valve is getting open and the burnt gas is removed. So here piston moves from BDC to TDC and here at the same time the crank will complete its uh, remaining half revolution from B to A and total angle covered by the crank which is equal to 4 pi and we have to show the exhaust stroke. So this is about the 4 main stroke. So we can say that in 4 stroke engine total angle covered which is equal to 4 pi. Or this is the one cycle. Now we have to plot the diagram. So for that we have to first find out what is the work done that is getting produced in the expansion stroke also and in the compression stroke also. So if we observe the diagram it is mentioned that during the suction stroke and exhaust stroke power produced sorry power consumed is negligible. So we have to remember that or uh, this is the important point that during 4 stroke engine only in the expansion stroke the power is produced and for the remaining 3 stroke that is suction stroke, compression stroke and exhaust stroke power is getting consumed. So what is the power getting developed in the expansion stroke is used for the consumption of the another strokes that is suction stroke, compression stroke and exhaust stroke. 
So this is the important point. Now here one condition is given that the work done during the expansion stroke is three times the work done during the compression stroke. So we can say that this is the main important point. So we will say W to the base E work done during expansion stroke is three times work done to the due to compression stroke. So during suction stroke and exhaust stroke power is negligible. So we will say it is zero. And what is the work done during expansion stroke and work done during compression stroke. So we have to first find out what is the total work done. So how to find out that work done. Now if we observe we have given that for 4 stroke engine rotational speed is given. So this rotational speed n is equal to 300 rpm. So for that crank this is getting rotated. And it's a rotational speed is 300 rpm is given. So from that we can calculate here what is the total work done. So total work done means work done during expansion stroke and work done during compression stroke. So we can calculate. And here this is the condition that is also mentioned in the question. So how to apply the simple formulas to calculate work done by using n is equal to 300 rpm. So we know that for the turning moment diagram work done per cycle which is equal to mean torque multiplied by the angle covered or crank angle covered in one cycle. So what is the one cycle that is here one cycle starts from the suction stroke and ends at the exhaust stroke. So this is one cycle and total angle covered which is equal to 4 pi. So this is important for 4 stroke engine uh, for one cycle the angle covered is equal to 4 pi. So if we use this basic formula that is work done per cycle is equal to T mean multiplied by crank angle theta per cycle. So now on both side I will divide by time. So work done per cycle divided. So W by time which is equal to T mean into theta by time. So we know that work, work done per unit time that is nothing but power. So here is power which is equal to again T mean into theta by T. So angular displacement by time that is nothing but velocity. That is we can say angular velocity because here angular displacement is there. So we will use here omega. And omega is nothing but 2 pi n by 60. So I will use here 2 pi n by 60 because here n is given. So P is equal to T mean into 2 pi n by 60 is the formula. So again I will multiply here on both sides with theta. So theta is again the crank angle per cycle. So T mean into theta which is equal to P into 60 by 2 pi n into theta. But we know that this total angle covered in one cycle is nothing but this 4 pi. So if I write here 4 pi instead of theta then this pi pi is getting cancelled. Then here 2 and here 2 that is and what is the new formula that is T mean into theta is nothing but work done per cycle which is equal to P into 60 into 2 divided by N. Now it is simple for us to find out the answer. So here power that is mentioned in the question and that is equal to 20 into 10 raised to 3 watts. So I will write here work done which is equal to power 20 into 10 raised to 3 multiplied by 60 into 2 divided by capital N. So N is equal to 300. So if we calculate this we will get the answer 8000 Newton meter. Net work done per cycle is nothing but the work done due to expansion stroke minus work done due to compression stroke. Because during the expansion stroke this power is getting developed. So we can say that the work done is getting produced and during the compression stroke the power is getting consumed. So we have to subtract the work done from the compression stroke that is here we have to take we minus wc and which is equal to the total work done so we have calculated this total work done or net work done per cycle now the relation in between this we and wc is given that is we is equal to 3 times wc 
So if we put here this relation that is W E minus. So W C is equal to W E by 3. So which is equal to 2 by 3 W E. And if we write this formula W is equal to 2 by 3 W E. And that's why W E is equal to 12,000 Newton meter. Because W we have already calculated. So it is given that for the turning moment diagram. This work done due to expansion stroke and work done due to compression stroke that we have to show in the shape of triangle. So I will show this in the shape of triangle that is work done during the expansion stroke. So we have to draw here one triangle. So this is the base from the 2 pi to 3 pi. So I will show that this is the triangle A, B, C. So we know that this area of triangle is nothing but work done due to expansion. Now this is the base that is from B to C and what is the height? So for that I have to draw one vertical line passing through this point A and here the angle will be 90 degrees. So here I will say point G. So how we can find out the area of the triangle? So here this half multiplied by base BC multiplied by AG. So for this BC I will take 3 pi minus 2 pi that is pi and what is the height AG. So for this height AG is nothing but the torque at this point A. So how to find out? So this AG. So for this WE I will put here 12,000 which is equal to half multiplied by pi multiplied by AG. And that's why AG is equal to 7,638 Newton meter. So this value of point A is nothing but for this torque I will say 7630. So we have to plot here. So if we show this, this is 7638 Newton meter. And this is the maximum value for the torque. That, that, that's why we can say this is the T max. Now again we will find out what is the mean torque. So we have formula that is the mean torque multiplied by the crank angle per cycle which is equal to work done per cycle. So work done per cycle that we have calculated. So what is the theta? So crank angle covered during one cycle is 4 pi. So T mean is equal to 8000 divided by 4 pi which is equal to 637 Newton meter. So again we have to plot this. So from this uh, Point zero, we have to take some suitable scale. Here is 637 Newton meter and draw one horizontal line passing through the selected point. And this line is nothing but T mean, that is for mean torque. So the difference in between this maximum torque and this mean torque is nothing but excess torque. So I will show here the difference is. T axis. So this difference. So this is nothing but T axis. And here T axis is equal to T max minus T min. So if we take the difference we will get 7001 Newton meter. Now we will first find out here what is the coefficient of fluctuation of speed. So for that it is mentioned in the question that total fluctuation of speed is not to exceed plus minus 2% of the mean speed. So if we observe this, so what is the meaning of total fluctuation? It is the difference in between maximum speed and minimum speed. So maximum speed is given. So if I write maximum speed, we will consider omega 1 is plus 2% of the mean speed and minimum speed is omega 2 minus 2% of the mean speed. So what is the total fluctuation? So total fluctuation is omega 1 minus omega 2. So we will put here value. So omega 1 is plus 2 percent and here omega 2. So minus in the bracket minus 2. So minus minus will become plus. So here total fluctuation is 4 percent of omega. So mean speed we will consider notation as a omega. So we know that what is the formula for the coefficient of fluctuation of speed that is omega 1 minus omega 2 by omega. So if I write here this, this total fluctuation is nothing but omega 1 
minus omega 2 which is equal to 4 percent of omega so omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by omega which is equal to 4 percent and 4 percent means what 4 by 100 and which is equal to 0 0.04 and this is the coefficient of fluctuation of speed now we will show turning moment diagram during the compression stroke so here the power is consumed so we have to subtract this total power that we can say the total work done during the compression stroke so we have to show the diagram below this line so this is the line so below this line we have to show this triangle now we will move for the calculation of maximum fluctuation of energy so this maximum fluctuation of energy is nothing but area above the mean torque so here area above the mean torque that means this is the t mean line and we have to find out what is the area of this triangle ADE. So for this triangle how to find out the area that is half multiplied by base DE multiplied by height AF. So this height AF is nothing but T axis and that we have calculated. But how to find out this base DE. So for that again we will take the two triangles and we will take its ratio that is triangle ADE and triangle ABC. So for this triangle ADE and ABC we will take the ratio for the base and height. So for this two triangle base DE divided by BC which is equal to height AF divided by AG. So this AF, AG and BC are known. So BC is nothing but 3 pi minus 2 pi that is pi. So what is the value of DE that is 2.88 rad. So if we put here the value we will get the area of this triangle that is nothing but maximum fluctuation of energy that is 10,081 newton meter. Now we know that this maximum fluctuation of energy which is equal to 2 into kinetic energy of flywheel multiplied by coefficient of fluctuation of speed. So coefficient of fluctuation of speed that we have calculated earlier now what is the kinetic energy of flywheel? So in linear motion kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. So flywheel is rotating that means instead of m we have to take mass moment of inertia that is i and instead of v we have to take angular velocity that is omega. So our formula is delta e is equal to 2 into half i omega square into c to the base e. So this is c to the base e that is coefficient of fluctuation of speed. So now if I take so here c to the base s that is coefficient of fluctuation of speed. Now if I take the all the values that is the known value. So omega is nothing but 2 pi n by 60. So n is 300. So if I put here 300 and if I calculate with this omega that is 31.42 and we have to take square. So i this is the only unknown value and that we have to find out. So i is equal to 252. 255.2 kilogram meter square and this is the answer.